problem on the review on the board tomorrow, and we're going to take a test Thursday. All right, now I'm going to put a few of these on the board just so you remember how to do them. All right, so look on page 400 on 7.2. I told her, what is the shot going to be in the butt and the orange and the orange on three sides? I try my best. I better party every day. I went in the morning. Okay, so 18, 19, and 20, it says use the X and Y intercepts to graph the linear equation. So when I'm finding the X and the Y, when I find the X, I set Y equal to zero. So I get 2X equals 4, divide by 2, so X equals 2. That's the X intercept. All right? The Y intercept, I say 2 times 0 plus Y equals 4. That's 0, so Y just equals 4. All right, now I want you to graph it using the X and Y intercept. So X equals 2 for the point, and Y equals 4. Put a point and graph. That's it for 18 through 20. All right, 21 through 24. All we're doing is calculating the slope. All right, you don't have to do anything else. Just calculate the slope. What's the slope formula? Uh, is it mx over b or something like that? Uh, that's slope intercept. Oh, okay. The slope formula in 30 and 21. We got three, two. And five more. Alright, this is x1, y1, and this is x2, y2. So the slope formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Just plug it in. So y2 is 1 minus y2, or y1 is 2, all over x2, which is 5, minus x1, which is 3. 2 minus 1 is negative 1, 5 minus 3 is 2, so your slope is negative 1 half. <coughs> Alright. Um, 25 through 28, you're just graphing it. Like 25, it's already in slope-intercept form. All these are in slope-intercept form. So, 25, what does 25 say? Y equals what? Equals 2x minus 4. 2x minus 4. Well, 4 is your y-intercept. 2 is your slope. So I go down 4. Put a point. My slope, I'm going up 2 and over 1. Put another point and grab it. That's what we're doing on 25 through 28. They're all, those are already in slope-intercept form. All right, 29 through 31. You have to put them in slope intercept then it wants you well if you put it in slope intercept and graph it we're good all right somebody read 31 31 3x plus 2y equals 4 so I'm going to solve for y because I want to get in terms of slope intercept y equals mx plus b subtract 3x I get 2y equals negative 3x plus 4. I divide everything by 2. So I get y equals negative 3 over 2x plus 2, where 2 is my y-intercept and negative 3 halves is my slope. So I graph it. So I go up 2. From there, I go down 3 to the right 2. Graph it. All right. Now, 32 through 34, I'm not going to do that. Those should be. We're just graphing horizontal and vertical. If it's an X, if it's X equals it's a vertical line. If it's Y equals it's a horizontal line. All right. Hey, we do all that review. Are we need any extra points tomorrow? Like we did last time. Mm. <coughs> 
mean, it's great. If you do, if you, the review is great. We're turning it in tomorrow. You did a test grade too, like, yeah, like it'll be a hundred point grade. That's what I'm All right, I tell you what, scratch thirty six through thirty eight. Scratch those. We didn't really talk about those in here, so one over here. Now we did talk about forty five through fifty six. All right, on forty five through forty seven. It says solve each system by gravity. Well, what does 45 say? X plus Y equals 5. And what? 3X minus 1. I have to put both of these in, in slope intercept form. Once I put them in slope intercept, I graph them. The point at which they cross is the solution to this system of equations. So I get x plus y equals 5, so subtract x. So y equals negative x plus 5. That's 1 I got to graph. And then 3x minus y equals 3. Subtract 3x. So negative y equals negative 3x plus 3. I don't want negative y, I want positive y, so we just change all the signs. So I get y equals. 3x minus 3, so I graph both of these two. Up 5. Slope is negative 1, so down 1, right 1. There's one graph. There's this one. Alright. Here I go down 3. Then up 3 over 1. <coughs> graph that. That's the solution. Okay, that's 45 through 47. Put them in slope intercept. We've already graphed, so that shouldn't be a problem. And then the point where they meet, we just put a circle around it. All right, 48 through 50, it says solve by the substitution method. So. Solve for a variable. What? We have x. We have this bottom one. Solve for x, right? We have x in terms of y. So I'm going to take whatever this x is, plug it in for x. So I've got 2 times 3y plus 10 plus 3y equals 2. Distribute. So 6y plus 20 plus 3y equals 2. I combine like terms, so 9y plus 20 equals 2. Subtract 20, so 9y equals negative 18. Divide by 9, y equals negative 2. Am I done? No. Nope. I'm going to plug this y equals negative 2 in back to this function right here. So I'm going to say x. x equals 3 times negative 2 plus 10. So that's negative 6 plus 10. So x equals 4. There's x, there's y. Alright, that's how we use substitution. Alright. When we say addition method, okay, look at 51. We're trying to cancel a variable out by adding the two equations together. So, 51, what does it say? N plus 2, Y equals negative 3, X minus Y equals negative 3. I'm 12. All right. Seems like we have the same coefficients in X, right? They both have 1 as a coefficient. All we need is one of them to be negative one instead of positive one. So let's multiply. Which one of these do you want to multiply by negative one? Oh, yeah, so that is negative one. 
So those will cancel. Yeah. Which one do you want to solve? Which one do you want to multiply by negative 1? Negative 2, 1. Alright, so we'll multiply this by negative 1. So we'll get negative x minus 2y equals 3. Now add these two together. Those cancel. I get negative 3y equals negative 9. Divide by negative 3. Y equals 3. Alright, let's plug that back into the original equation. Right, you can plug it into the top one, it don't matter. So we get x plus 2 times 3 equals negative 3. X plus 6 equals negative 3. Subtract 6, you get x equals negative 9. There's x. Alright, and then 54 through 56. All you're doing there, you're just solving by any method you want to, like, like 48, 51, or 45. You just pick which one you like the best and, and solve them that way. Okay? The last part is 7, 6. Alright, so we have 59 through 65. We just graph the inequality. Uh, this is stuff that we've been doing the past couple days. What does 59 say? We just have the inequality. So let's solve for y. So subtract x. Negative 3y is less than or equal to negative x plus 6. Now I'm going to have to divide by negative 3. What happens when I multiply or divide by negative? What? The inequality changes, right? It flips over. So I've got y is greater than or equal to 1 third x minus 2. I go to graph that. I go down two, up one, over three. Solid or dashed line? Solid. Solid. Because it's greater, it's greater than or equal to. Now, is it greater than or less than? So we shade above. All right, 66 through 71. All right, it's just a system of inequality. We've got 3x minus y is less than or equal to 6. And we've got x <coughs> plus y is greater than or equal to 2. Okay, I'll tell you what, let's do it like this. You should do greater than two. Alright? So, solve both of these for y. So I get 3x minus y less than or equal to 6. Subtract 3x. Get negative y less than or equal to negative 3x plus 6. Change the signs when I do what flips. <laughs> Alright, so y is greater than or equal to 3x minus 6. There's the first one. Alright, and solve for this one. x plus y is greater than 2. Subtract x. I get y is greater than negative x plus 2. There's the second. Alright. So when I graph these, I'm going to go down 6. From that, I go up three and over one. Solid or dash line on this one? Solid. Solid. Why? Greater than. Right here, I go up two. <laughs> Down one and right one. Solid or dash line? Down. Dash. All right. What is this one? This is going to be shaded where? Above or below? Why? Okay, because it's greater than or equal to. So we're shading it above. 
Where's this one going to be shaded? Above, right? Because this is just greater than. So if they're both shaded above, that's where the solution will be, right? Okay. That's it. That's going to be the test. I mean, we don't have nothing else is going into it. If you can do this review, you can pass the test. If you can do the review, you can actually probably make 100 on the test. Right, the review will be very similar to the test. Like I said, some people need the extra 100 point grade by turning this in. All right? We're going to put every one of these on the board tomorrow. Wait, the test is going to be from the board. So work on it in here today. Work on it in here today. You should get done. If you don't get done, you should get awful close. All right? So you shouldn't have a lot of homework. What you don't do, you'll get, how long do you think it takes to put the rest of the board? 30 minutes, you think? So you'll get, what you don't finish in here today, you'll get 10 minutes from the time the tardy bell rings to turn this in tomorrow. This is <coughs> well, yes and no. We don't. You're only getting 10 minutes in here tomorrow to work on this. And then we're turning it in and be a 100 point grade. All right? I would take the time that you have today and, and try to finish it. I'll do And you don't have homework regardless, but if you don't turn it in tomorrow, that's a 100 point grade. Or if you turn it in, it's not all the way done, you still don't get the 100 point grade. Does that make sense? Thank you, boss. Thank you.